any time that we feel groundless, any time that we feel at the edge of our knowledge, every time that we feel confusion, uh, uncertainty, and it can be a painful feeling. So we use the metaphor of the edge, again, from the Camino, this idea of this pilgrimage. Uh, if you walked 90 kilometers more from Santiago, you'd reach a coastal town called Finisterre. And Finisterre is in the Latin, literally the end of the earth. And on the ancient medieval maps, they would draw dragons and uh, lions because it was terrifying. You know, sailors didn't return. They thought they would fall off the fall off the edge of the world. And often when we're at the edge and we don't know what to do in our careers or in our lives or in our choices, we, we reach that edge. And it's a somatic thing. It's not just a, a, phys, a cognitive thing. We might feel palpitations. Our breathing might get shallow. We might feel know disturbs clammy hands but what we discovered is you know we reach many edges in our lives multiple edges but we tend to have uh, distinct responses when we're at the edge so to give you an example harsha one of the typical responses is control you know we tend to if you work in a company as well you see more controls being put into place more processes and they that takes away some of the anxiety at the edge I always give the example as well, when I was buying a house in London, I had to, the vendor for the house I was buying needed to uh, move by a particular date so I could complete. And uh, she was delaying and delaying. And so I said to the state agents, if she's not able to complete by this date, um, I'm going to withdraw from the purchase. And the state agent, you know, I've not received sage advice from an estate agent, but said, Stephen, can you remain a little longer in the uncertainty, in the unknown? So I did, and I completed. But what that taught me was, by withdrawing, was my way of taking back control, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, asserting back some sense of control over the situation. So control is a common one, and there's many forms of control. Second one is like a, almost like a what I call like a paralysis by analysis. You know, we get the spreadsheets, we draw the drawings, we hire the consultants to come in. But by the time we've done the analysis, the situation has changed. Another one can be like passivity or resignation. I can't do anything because nothing will change. You know, the situation won't get better. So it's holding that passivity. Another is catastrophic thinking. You know, I can't take that job or I can't leave my job because I'll never work again. I'll have no clients, but our mind automatically goes to the worst. Or there's a, let's say, the 30 second rush to action. I can't tolerate this edge, so I'm going to do something, anything quickly to almost take away the anxiety of remaining a bit longer. So we call that the quick fix. And often it doesn't really solve the underlying problem and could make things worse. Now, all of these aren't negative, Harsha. They're quite common and they have positive as well as uh, positive effects as well. So if I'm catastrophic in my thinking, now generally I'm prepared for the worst. <laughs> So, you know, I might have my uh, funds, I might uh, have a backup plan, I might, but, you know, there's a book, I think, called Only the Paranoid Survive. But the cost is that that, that worst case scenario may never happen. But what has happened is that our bodies have been through the pressure and the stress of living through that. I think it's Mark Twain's most of our problems, you know, have suffered have never actually happened, they're most, mostly imaginary. But our bodies have really um, gone there, and the consequences that we 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 lift that out in our in our imagination, if not in our lives, but all of them have positives. So the analysis is super useful. But if we get stuck there, can detract and delay, and also obfuscate the real issue. So it's about recognizing when we're at the edge and facing the unknown. Where do we tend to go by default? And how can we look at other potential ways to respond and at least acknowledge what the strengths here and what are the, the costs of continuing in my catastrophic thinking or continuing in my rush to action or what, whatever the, the sense has. So that's what we mean by the edge and recognizing that, you know, we come to the edges many times, but how do we bring awareness to that and more uh, curiosity to our approach when we're at the edge? rather than just going unconsciously default into the, um, into the unknown.